Hello, my name is Rachel Norris and today we're going to make um, these very simple little cat earrings with little fishes dangling from their mouths. And we're also going to work through making the ear wires with matching beads um, to hang them from. They can also be used as little pendants as well. So I hope you enjoy working along with me today. So we're going to learn how to make these uh, little cat earrings which um, have little faces and very simple details of the body, little fishes, which you can either mount um, upwards or downwards, and little matching ear wires. So we're going to go through making all of these. And the tools, if I move this to one side, are fairly simple to make the actual earrings. You need chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and uh, flush cutter pliers. Uh, round nose pliers to, to form and shape round bits of wire chain nose pliers to sort of manipulate the wire into, into shapes and the flush cutter pliers of course to give a lovely flush cut um, a nice uh, clean finish to the wire and you'll also need a hammer um, and a steel block and I have a range of hammers um, for different faces you can see the sizes of the faces here um, from um, large faced hammers um, to small faced hammers here and when you're looking at these um, little designs I tend to go for the smaller uh, faces um, because you have less impact um, um, or you can actually focus where you're actually hammering where you want to hammer uh, a little bit more easily but um, just use what you've got and just target your hammering um, appropriately when you're making the pieces up. Um, those are the basic things you'll need. If you're making up the ear wires, um, you'll just need probably, it's called a, 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 a round, rounding um, burr uh, tool, and it's sold by Beadsmith and Jewelry Maker, and you can round the end of your wire. If you haven't got one of these, a little needle file or um, a, a, an emery board uh, just to help round the ear wire so it doesn't hurt as it goes through the ear is useful. Um, and the other thing you might need just for making little jump rings, if you're not going to um, use ready-bought ones, I've got a mandrel um, used for making jump rings. And those are all the basic tools that you'll need today. Now we're just going to list the ingredients that you need. Um, for the wire, you'll need um, one millimetre gauge um, gold wire or gold tone wire, um, 0.8 millimetre gauge wire, and some 0.4 millimeter gauge wire and for the bead seed beads you'll need um, some 80 um, amber golds which is a beautiful color um, and some galvanized gold 11 o's and some galvanized gold 8 o's and that's all the basic ingredients that you'll need to make up the earrings here are the templates that you'll need to use to make your wire and if you want to zoom in and perhaps take a screenshot. There's a scale here that you can use um, that when you, you can make them to any size, but you can actually use this to help scale your, your earrings to the right size. So take a screenshot, print this out and use it as, it as your template. I've also included a little extra bonus template of a rabbit, bunny rabbit, if you want to make one of those in the future. But here's a little cat a mainframe template. Um, there's a template for the eyes and a little template for the fish. And if I move up um, everything down a little bit, there's going to be a template for the, the earring hook as well. So just take a screenshot, zoom in and, uh, and print it out. You can use this as your, as your templates. First of all, we're going to make the little cat frame with 30 centimetre length of um, one millimetre wire. I'm going to make a little loop at one end with using the tips of my round nose pliers at one end of the wire to make a little tiny circular loop. And it, first of all, it starts off like a P with a little straight end. And you just trim that off and to make a little, little circle a bit more circular. And then I'm going to go back in again with the round nose pliers and just carry on to start to form the spiral. And I do quite a, a loose spiral. So you can see I'm just pulling the wire around into a spiral with a little gap between the wire that you formed. I can if you place it against the diagram, you can see the spacing, the type of spacing that you're going to need. And so actually it might need to be around the other way. There we go, like that. And you can either choose now just to pull this around 
uh, like so, um, put it around using the diagram as a, as a guide, or you can bring your chain nose pliers in and just form a bit more of the spiral by pulling the wire around. And you can put that onto the diagram. So you can do it either way, really. I'm just going to place my finger over the, um, the wire spiral already made and just pull it around the diagram to help me. Um, because basically, it's all right if you're making one pendant because um, the cat spiral doesn't have to be exactly the same on each each area, each area uh, for a pendant. But if you're making earrings, you need to make them as mirror image as possible. So um, this spiral is, is there for you to use to manipulate to make sure it's the same for each little cat that you make. So you can see how I've used little movements of the chain nose plus just to make the spiral. Now um, we're ready to form the rest of the body. So I'm pulling the wire around and the, the body using the diagram as a guide, then bringing chain nose pliers in to start to manipulate the side of the body. And I'm going to move the diagram around just to make it a little bit easier to me to work from the side. And you can do this yourself as well, rather than make it awkward. So I'm just going to use the chain nose pliers just to start to, to shape the little cat's body around. The pointy ears, you can take the um, wire off the diagram if you want to make these ears properly pointy. So I've made a, a bend to judge where it is. I'm going to take it off the diagram and just push the wire downwards to form the ear and it'll clamp either side and it just makes it a little bit more pointy. Then opening it back out again just helps to, to do that. Then you need to do another little push upwards to start to form the top of the head and the loop and another sharp bend upwards uh, to form the top loop at the top of the head. Now you can bring in the round nose pliers again, insert them just here and just to form that loop and pull the wire around. You can see that happening there. Place it over the diagram just to make sure you've got it. Just move the diagram to place in the right position. Yes, that's lovely, and the size is the same. Again, if you're making a pendant, it doesn't matter so much. Um, you know that you, you've got it a little bit smaller or bigger it doesn't matter but if you're making earrings you're trying to make things as symmetrical as possible um, if you're also as a tip making earrings just make sure as I form these ears um, that you I tend to make them at the same time so I make two frames and then uh, work through all the stages at the same time so it's really easy to, to keep them looking similar when you're doing things like that so you can see I made another ear and then just going to work round, making the side of the, of the cheek. And there we go. <laughs> just take a bit more time than I am, just to make sure that this is all the same size and, and really mirror image. And I'll show you in a minute what the frame should look like. So I pulled it around. And then I want to use, using the diagram as a guide, use some flush cutter pliers just to cut the end of the tail. So we're just going to move on to the next stage. I'll show you the finished frames in just a moment at the next section of the video. So here you can see um, I've got a completed cat um, frame um, and I've made another one. And to make it sort of mirror image for the earring, all you need to do is, is turn it over. So it's made using the same template, but just turned over to the other side. Um, we need to make that cat's tail nice and curly. So we're going to use very similar techniques to making the spiral. Um, so what I'm going to do is just insert the round nose pliers to the very tip of the tail. Use that little turn of the round nose pliers. Cut trimming off the end. Trimming off the end and then make that little spiral and do the same for the other side just make sure you spiral down to the same level so a little tight little spiral like so and you should end up with two little cats um, ready to make earrings one will be facing one way one facing the other way we're just going to hammer those and um, I'll show you how to do that now well the only thing you've got to remember when you're hammering is just remember to hammer um, one cat one way and one cat the other way. 
So bring in my um, sort of two ounce hammer. You can use a larger hammer if you like because you're hammering the whole shape. Um, so I can use the larger face hammer on this case. Get a steel block and I'm just going to hammer the whole cat. So um, just make sure one's facing the other way, one's facing frontwards and right and left. So hammer the whole shape. I always manage to, to short the lights when I do this. Done it again. See I've hammered the whole shape um, left and right. Just get that light looking a little bit better. And um, if you actually turn it over, this is the side that's going to be the front. So all the hammer marks appear at the back of the earrings. And you've got two little cats ready to make up. Um, your set of earrings. So we'll move on to the next stage, we're going to make some of the other frames. Before we progress on to making the rest of the frames of the more detailed cat, um, you can see um, two simple cat frames that we've just made um, and I've made them in mirror image and you can make these up on their own as very simple earrings without even having to add any of the other details onto it. Um, so we will be showing you how to make the um, earring finding in later stages, but I'll just show you how to attach it uh, to this simple cat frame. So just pick up the little earring finding um, and just open the, the, the bottom loop like a little gate, swinging it open. And then attach the cat at, it, at its top loop. Just making sure that the nice um, hammered frame stays at the just move this out of the way at the uh, front of the earring, and then gently close it, manipulate it closed, and squash it closed with the with your with your chain nose pliers. Just manipulate it closed. And one thing I should show you actually is just to that you need to just squash that um, top loop so that it's closed, and it doesn't. Then the earring finding won't come out of its of its attachment but you may need to reshape the frame in fact you certainly will so just take a little bit of time just to uh, move it in and out of position until it's um, looking nice again and so here you can see two much more two simple earring findings sorry two simple frames um, made up into earrings all on their own but now what we're going to do is progress on to making all the little frames to make these more complex or layered, more detailed cat earrings in the next stages, as well as the earring findings with matching beads. So here is um, the setup ready for the eye frames. You need about 12 centimetre length of 0.8 millimetre wire, and we're going to use this little template here to make up the eye frame. So I'm just going to do one side of it um, and show you what to do. So let's move that out of the way. Again, I'm using the template as a guide and using the midsection of the 0.8 millimeter wire, I'm just going to make a little bend in the center. I'm going to take it off um, the piece of paper just to make a sharper bend with using chain nose pliers. And I'm just going to make little triangular bends um, using the template as a guide, lifting the wire off the paper every so often, make a little bend, check it against the template. Yes, it's in the right place. And if it's not, just make a sharper bend or make, make it a different place and then make a sharper bend. Because repeated bendings in the same part of the wire can weaken it. So just avoid, try and avoid that wherever you can. So I'm just doing another little sharp bend upwards, pull it round. Again, you do the other, the other side exactly the same and just trim the wire um, using the template as a guide. So do the other side in exactly the same way, so you'll end up with a, a little set of eyes. And this, then just curl the very ends of the wire, just using the template as, um, sorry, the same techniques that we used before for curling. And you can see you're just curling um, the ends of the, of the wire, um, and not all the way up to the, the, the base of the eye. And just make sure you do two of those and exactly the same for each little cat. Um, when you do hammer them, just make sure you hammer only the little curls just at the base of the eye. So use a very small faced hammer if you can. You can see I've got a smaller face and just hammer just 
the base here don't hammer anything else because um, you need to be able to wrap along the eye so moving on we're going to make the little fish up now to make the little fish frame um, you can see I've just used that little template here just use a, um, a six centimeter length of 0.8 millimeter wire make a bend in the middle of the wire and just like you made the eyes um, make a sort of sharp bend for the nose of the fish I'm just going to shake one side of, of, of the of the uh, little fish around the template using that as a general sort of guide make a bend at the base and trim the tail and do that the same for the other side and then just curl just curl the, the um, tail ends that's all you need to do to make the little fish frame and then um, lastly just hammer um, the the whole of the fish using a small to medium face hammer just hammer the whole of the fish all the way along just to work hard on it and those little loops you can use to hang from the little cat or you can use the nose section so we're going to move on to the assembly of um, putting the whole cat together in this section we're going to add some sea beads into the the face um, to make the eyes and nose so take a 30 to 40 centimetre length of 0.4 millimetre wire and thread on 11 naught C bead to the centre um, of, the, um, of the wire and I've chosen a galvanised gold C bead for this. Place it um, over the nose section for the moment, slightly widen it, slightly widen the gap here in, in the nose section just so it sits in between the wires and then bring the 0.4 millimetre wire around the corner of the eye once and then just uh, wrap the 0.4 millimeter wire along the top of the um, of the eye frame. Forgive me if I can't come in and out of the picture because this is actually a very small little uh, frame. I'm having to zoom in and out um, with the camera to get you to focus, um, but um, it might mean that my hands move out of the camera. So forgive me. Forgive the state of my nails. I've been doing a lot of metal work recently, so. Wrap along to the top corner or the middle, sorry, the middle of the eye at the top and stop there for the moment. Now we're going to work back round to, to the nose. So I'm going to rotate it slightly. I want that nose bead to sit really closely in the centre again because it's slightly moved out. Make sure you sort of manipulate it a little bit so you've got a gap there. Bring the click the wire down at the back of the frame. I've got to pull this fairly firmly because I want everything to sit into place. And then wrap around the corner of the eye again, pulling that into place and then start to wrap along the top of this wire. If you feel that that, not point, um, that, sort of, that bead in the centre isn't going to sit very well, you can also wrap above and below that bead if you feel it's going to move out of place. But if you pull with enough tension, you should be all right. Um, and then last thing, I'll show you a little trick to help it sit nicely in place. Um, just before we add the eye beads in. So I've wrapped along to the top corner of this eye. Sorry, the top middle of this eye section. Just grip a tiny little grip by the side of this bead just to help clamp it into place. And then I'm going to thread on an 8 -0 amber seed bead to the 0.4 millimeter wire and wrap it into one of the eye sockets. So bring it through into the eye socket so it sits centrally, holding the bead in place with one uh, finger nail, and again forgive my fingernails, so it sits right in the middle of the eye. Just wrap along to the corner, but not to the very edge because you'll need a little bit of gap to be able to attach it to the, the cat eye frame, sorry the cat face frame. So let's get that out of the way. And I'll stop and I'll do the same on the other side. So repeat exactly the same on the other side um, and so that you can get a little frame like so. And then what we're going to do is attach that to the cat frame now. So I'm going to bring in one of the frames that we've already made. Just check that there's a lovely smooth side. So I'm going to go for this side being the, the, the front. And you can see this little eye frame fits nicely over the little cat nicely. So Holding this in place, I'm just going to start to wrap around both the side of the frame 
and the eye. So this will take, this will be a bit fiddly because you've got to sort of make sure it's all placed nicely and also not too f up near the ears, not too far down and also that both earrings are going to be the same so make sure when you make them that you're going to be able to make this the other one the same. So go three times into this eye, um, eye at the right at the corner of the eye and round the, the cat frame, face frame and just do maybe once above, wrap once above for the minute because I just want to um just attach the other side this one's gonna this wrapper's gonna look far up so i'm gonna use my fingernails or you can use pliers just to put it down into place or just use a plier squeeze like so you can see it on the side of the of the cat like that little plier squeeze just to bring it all into place and then i'm just going to turn the whole piece around and just attach the other eye so again holding everything in place, thread the wire through the outer corner of the eye and around the face three times and then once above the face, sorry once above the eye and then maybe a couple of times more on either side. I'm just going to work on this side to show you so a couple more times up, just make sure everything's balanced. And then when we get to the ear, we're just going to bring in um, some 11, sorry, 8 naught galvanised gold seed beads just pop into the ear, like so. And then wrap around into place. Wrap to the top of the ear and wrap around the top of the forehead. I'm just going to work on the other side of the cat's face and bring you back to as, 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 um, bring you to a point at which we can finish this top of this little cat off in a moment. So I'm just going to get to this point. I'm going to come back when I'm a bit more complete on the other side. Now you can now you can see I've got to the top of the head and I've got both um, ears ear beads in place and I've wrapped to the top of the head there. Um, I'm going to get rid of one of the wires because we don't need both of them. So I'm just going to use the flush cutter pliers to cut as close as I can to the top of that little cat's, the loop at the top of the head as possible on that side. And just use chain nose pliers just to um, neaten that with the wire up. And this is optional, but I've put a little detail of an 11 knot bead in. You can either trim that off um, and clamp that little loop together, or you can add another 11 no. Um, the galvanised gold sea bead into this point, um, just with the wrap of the 0.4mm wire across um, the loop and then you attach using one wrap on this side and, and pass it to the back of the loop and one wrap around that side, pulling things tight and you can just cut this off into place. Now that I think that looks okay like that, one loop around, cut that close to the ear wire as possible, sorry the loop wire as possible and squat it in so that's the little cat's face done. So the next thing to do is make up the little fish. So we already made the little fish frame and we're just going to add an eye bead in. It's really similar to the work we did on the on the uh, little cat. So I'm going to take a shorter length of wire, not point, that's about 30 centimetres, 0.4 millimetre wire, and I'm going to attach, so bring up the face frame, the fish frame, and uh, move these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, and put the bead quite about two, a third away down the fish at least, so there's a bit of a gap at the top of the fish, and start to wrap along. And you could do this um, wrap along before you add the bead in. It's just to show you that these are the distances you need uh, for placement of the bead and the mat you need to wrap. So just wrap along one side of the fish with a 0.4 millimeter wire, like so, until you get to the tail. And then returning and just squash those wraps together so they look nice and neat. Chain those pliers. And then if it distorts, you can just squash the fish back into to because because you're using quite a bit of force when you're wrapping sometimes, and then press the, press the eye bead into place and then wrap along the other side of the fish down to the tail, and again the next bit's optional, just the same as you did with the top of the cat. You can either just cut the wires off um, 
into place or add another bead in. And I chose to add another bead, detail bead in. So I'll show you how you did that in a second. How we did that in a second. So I'm just going to get down to here. It's always more difficult when you're working to a camera because I'm nowhere near where I normally am with my eyes to be able to see what I'm doing. So bear with me. Um, so first of all, I'm going to get an 11 naught seed bead and just add that into the tail, like so, and wrap to the other side, maybe make a little gap, I'm going to make a little gap at the base of this tail, there we go, and wrap, round, wrap round, once round there, passing the other wire to the back of the fish behind the bead, wrap twice round there, and cut that one close. To the tail, wrap this one once more, I think, around and cut close to that side of the tail. Then we're going to needle and all this up with a ply, chain nose plier squeeze, and then I'm going to bring the tail back together again and squash it into place. So that's the little fish made. So that little fish um, can be attached either way, upwards with the um, with the through the nose or downwards through the little loops to the, to the cat. And then we're going to just go through um, making some jump rings to make these little fishes up. Or you can use ready-made jump rings. The jump rings you need to make are with 0.8mm wire on a 2.5mm mandrel, a bit like one of these. Um, you can use ready-made jump rings, which you can, you can buy quite easily, but if you want to make them in the same um, colour as your as your um, piece it's quite often nice to be able to know how to make them yourself so this is a little section which is two and a half millimeter wide um, and I'm just going to wrap a little bit of a spare wire 0.8 millimeter wire around the mandrel basically the best thing to do then is leave this for a while because the wire then has a sort of attains a wire memory and will remember its its shape uh, as, as it needs to be round like a jump ring so you can leave that for um, I mean, overnight is best, but um, you know, at least sort of an hour or so, um, and then you can cut it, and it won't spring apart so easily. So here's one I made earlier. So take that off. Or we can leave. I leave it on the mandrel actually overnight, um, just to help it. Um, but here's a section I made. It's made earlier. Take some flush cutter pliers and cut with a straight edge facing towards the jump ring you want to make once, then flip the flush cutter pliers over to the other side and place them as close to that cut edge onto the next sort of next rung of wire, next spiral of wire and cut again. And then you end up with a little jump ring with two flush cut edges. And you can do that a few times. And, and I tend to use this for all my scrap bits of wire. Um, I'll make a few jump rings and then later on I can just use them really easily and I haven't got to sort of wait 24 hours <laughs> to make them. So that, that's the jump rings made and we're just going to attach um, the uh, little fishes to, to the cat so we can choose a fish. Um, I'm going to use the little loops um, and have the, the fish facing downwards but it really doesn't matter because it looks quite nice either way and you can use you can attach the jump rings through the nose. Use two chain nose pliers um, in this case just to open up the jump ring. So I'm holding the jump ring with one set of chain nose pliers and just a little gentle sideways opening of the of the jump ring. There we go. And I'm just going to place the jump ring around the the cat's moustache here like so because that's the most fiddly little bit. And I was, um, I did actually, in one of the little cats, I just attached the fish before I wired the, the face onto the cat, so it really doesn't matter. And as long as if, um, as you make sure that the fish sits to the front of the cat when you're wiring the face on, it's probably a little bit easier to do it that way. But um, here we go. I'm not gripping enough, so I'm just going to manipulate this round so that I've got that ready to attach the little fish onto the front. Just through one of the little loops, just placing it onto the jump ring. This is fiddly, and you might sort of curse a bit because you're going to be dropping it on the on the 
and losing your jump rings. So make sure you work over the surface, you can catch any jump rings. And then just get that to close, holding the, everything in place nicely. You can get that to close on that side. And you just do the same through the other loop of the tail and you can attach to the other side of the of the little cat's moustache there um, to attach the, uh, the fishes so it dangles that way and if you want to attach through the nose just attach both jump rings through the fish's nose and through the moustaches in that, in that way as well so you can have them facing either way up now there your earrings complete um, and if you've got your own shepherd hooks attach them but I'm just going to show you an optional, um, in the full demo, I'm going to show you how to make a shepherd's hook. In this section, we're going to use um, this template here to make a little shepherd hook's earring finding in the same um, wire colour as your design piece, which is ever so useful. And you can make it in 0.6 or 0.8 millimetre diameter wire. And I've used 0.8 because it's a slightly heavier earring and it was a bit weighty and it might need a bit more of a stronger ear wire. Um, so I'm taking about a six or seven centimetre length of um, 0.8 millimetre wire and I'm making a bend of just over a centimetre from one end of the wire using chain nose pliers. So you'll make an outwards bend like so. And then just use round nose pliers just to make a little circle, circular loop at one end of the wire. Make sure this, this loop is um, sort of um, the same size for each earring. So I'm just going to make a cut near the loop, where it, near, it, near where it touches the wire as it um, runs straight upwards. I'm going to make a re, redo the loop so that it's... Um, the same, I'm just lift it away from the paper a little bit, I hope it stays in focus. So that it makes sort of an eye pin shape, makes sort of an eye pin shape, like so. And then check that against your template. There we go, so it's about the right size. And adjust that loop um, if you feel it's got too big or too small, just make sure that you've got it the right size. Place it over the template, and a nice straight bit coming up, and then make a, a bend outwards to start forming the loop using chain nose pliers and then you can just use your fingers um, or pliers just to shape it around. I'm going to use pliers so you can see me shaping it and the wire is lovely and soft so that you can and malleable so that you can um, shape it round like so. Just make sure it's the same size nice and round. That, not, that bit's not round enough so I'm going to make a sideways bend there and come back lift it off the paper just to make that a little bit rounder. If you want to, you can pop it around a mandrel, a nice round mandrel or pen, um, just to make sure it's nice and circular, um, just to help you make that circle nice and um, regular and neat and the same size. But just pop it on the paper and just make sure it fits over the template nicely. And then just cut the end of the wire like so. Now the next, you've got to sort of, um, make sure you've got two about the same size, like so. And then what you need to do is just round the ends off, or round this end off with a, a little burr cup, uh, sort of a, it's a burr or um, it's a beadsmith uh, round wire rounding tool, but it's ever so useful because it's got a little diamond burr cup at the end and you just place the tip of the wire in the burr cup and just rotate round. You just take your time. In the end, a little hard um, square end of wire will end up rounding off, um, which is quite nice. And it's a bit more comfortable to get, put it through your ear like that than if it's um, sharp. And just take your time. Make sure it's really well rounded. Um, if you haven't got one of those, just use a net. Um, memory file just like that just to round this off nicely so there's no sharp ends going through your ears so take your time make sure that's really soft and it's got a, um, a rounded but blunt end so it's not going to have any sharp edges that could hurt you as you as you pop it through your ears so the next thing to do is just make that bit of bead detail 
um, before you do any hammering on the on the on the earring finding. So I'm just going to add in um, uh, um, an 11 naught amber seed bead to this earring finding, like so. Just thread it over. If you've got smaller seed beads um, and you've made too much of a curl, maybe you can add them on before you do the, the shaping. But these ones fit nicely over the wire um, as before you weren't doing any, uh, even with the shaping. So I'm just going to take a sort of 15 centimetre length, probably a little bit too much, I think, of 0.4 millimetre wire. Any scrap bits from using the face of the cat, the touch the cat face, to be honest. And then just to wrap, start to wrap maybe three or four times around, um, just above where the bead is. Start to wrap the wire and then catch the bead by just holding it with your fingernail and catch the bead into one wire wrap and then wrap three or four times just below the bead. And here you can just cut the wire really close to the loop, like so, and just squash it down and then move the ear, ear, wire, ear wire around and just make sure it's four wraps and then make sure they're packed tightly together and cut this end and just um, smooth the wire down because you don't want anything cut it cut it catching against the ear lobe so smooth the circular motion in the direction of the wire and that's the earring finding nearly ready, but we're just going to do one little extra bit of detail. So we rounded that end, but we just need to make sure that um, it's quite a nice thing to do to add a little bit of flattening to the front edge to stop it, um, to help stop it rotating all the way around. It just helps the wire, uh, the ear wire stay in place. So holding the bead section well away from the, and you could hold it maybe with pliers. Actually, I'm going to do that there now. So holding that section away. Um, in fact, because I normally have a raised surface, I'm going to have to do it with my fingers. Sorry. Normally you can hold it the pliers or whatever, but as long as you haven't got the bead on the edge of the steel block, otherwise you might risk fracturing the bead. Um, just hammer the leading edge, but no more than that. Don't hammer around this bit. Just hammer the leading edge of the ear wire. It's really flat, and then squash along the rest of the ear, ear wire just gently, just a gentle squash, just to work hard on it. And you've got a nice strengthened ear wire with a lovely flattened edge detail that you can um, pop in your ears. And this bit sort of helps stop, stop the whole thing rotating round too much into the ear hole and helps keep it in place um, to attach it to the little cat all you need to do is open up open up this just like i said similar to open a jump ring so hold the ear wire in one hand open this little loop just with a slight open opening mechanism pop the little cat on through the, the top loop so make sure the cat is facing the front of the ear wire and then close the loop very carefully back into place, a little squash, but make sure it stays in position. And you've got your little cat earring um, attached to your um, shepherd's hook earring finding in the same wire colour with the detail in the same bead. So here are the earrings finished now in with mirror image little cats um, with the fishes hanging from the mouth, either up or down, depending on your preference. Um, you've learned how to make um, earring wires in the same colour with uh, matching seed beads to attach the cats from, which is a lovely skill. Um, and I really hope you enjoy making this uh, design. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the little cat earrings today. I very much look forward to seeing what you make. Um, if you do tag me on Facebook, I'd love to see what you make. JM Guest Designer, Rachel Norris. And I look forward to seeing uh, your creations.